Hyperlapses are a cool photography technique that can be used to capture some pretty spectacular footage. And the Mini 4 Pro, like the Mini 3 Pro, are great drones for capturing hyperlapses. They have excellent cameras, long battery life, they're small and quiet, so they don't attract a lot of attention, yet they handle wind quite well. Now, when it comes to setting up hyperlapses, there are so many variables you have to work with. From the different hyperlapse modes, to specific settings like length, interval, speed, and your camera settings. All of these variables allow for almost endless possibilities when it comes to creating hyperlapses, and that's what's great about them. But it can also be a lot to think about when you're up in the air trying to get this all set up, all while trying not to use up valuable battery life. So planning is important, and also having an idea of what settings to use in different situations will help you get better results. And I've captured a lot of hyperlapses that I thought were going to be epic that turned out to be quite disappointing. And it's usually just small things like too much movement or not having the right shutter speed. But through trial and error, I've learned a few things along the way. And there are a number of techniques that I use all the time to help improve the outcome of my hyperlapses. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Kapanen and I make videos all about helping you capture and create better content. And if that's something that interests you, then you'll want to subscribe to my channel to see more tips to help you with your content creation. And in this video, I'm going to share with you some techniques I use when capturing hyperlapses as I go through a few different examples showing you the effects of using these techniques. And I just want to note that for any daytime hyperlapses, I'm using an ND512 or ND1000 in order to get the long shutter speeds. All right, enough talk. Let's jump in and take a look at some hyperlapses. In this first example, I'm using the course lock mode, which allows you to set the direction the drone will fly, but also allows you to separately position the drone and camera to whatever direction you want to capture the hyperlapse. So the drone will fly in a straight line along the preset path with the camera pointed in the direction you set. So to set this up, the first thing you want to do is aim the drone in the direction you want it to fly. Then tap the lock icon on the screen and it will turn yellow to indicate the course is locked. You will also see a green line appear on the map showing you the preset flight path. Next, you want to aim the camera to whatever position you want to capture the hyperlapse from. If you want, you can also reposition the drone to adjust your starting point before hitting record. Below the lock icon, it shows the duration and number of photos that will be taken with the current settings. By tapping on them, you can then adjust the settings for interval, length, and speed. I'll leave the interval at 2 seconds for now, and just set the length to 10 seconds. But I want to go into the shutter speed settings, and the reason I left the interval at 2 seconds was to show you with a 2 second interval, the lowest shutter speed available is a third of a second. And in this case, a third or quarter second is the lowest I can go anyway without overexposing the shot. But if I increase the interval to 3 seconds, I can now select lower shutter speeds. But for this example, I actually used a quarter second, which actually makes for a good comparison because in the next example, I'm going to use a 1 second shutter speed. But for now, all I have to do is hit the record button and let it fly its mission. We'll skip over that and let's have a look and see how that one turned out. Alright, that one turned out okay, but I'd like to have a bit lower shutter speed. So in this example, I have some cloud cover and I'm able to use a 1 second shutter speed, which will be noticeably different than the last one using a quarter second. Now I also want to show you something you can use in the course lock mode that will add another element of movement, and that's selecting a point of interest. First, I'm going to position the drone to set the course lock. 
I'll often look at the map to roughly position the drone, then I'll switch back to the camera to make final adjustments. Then tap the lock icon to lock the course. I also like to set the white balance. To do this, I will put it in auto and allow it to adjust, then put it back into manual to lock it so it's not shifting during the hyperlapse. From here, you can also set the type of photos that will be saved with the hyperlapse. I just leave this on raw. That way, if I ever want to do some color grading, I have the raw files to work with. You can also set the video format of the auto-generated hyperlapse. Set that to whatever you prefer. Now, to finish setting this up, I'll go back into the settings and adjust the duration to 10 seconds and set the interval to 3 seconds. I'm also going to adjust the speed and to do that, just place your finger on the speed and slide left to right to increase or decrease the speed. Sometimes it can be a bit finicky. Now, just to show you, once this is all set up, I can reposition the drone to whatever starting point I want. If I look on the map, it will show me the flight path indicated by the green line and the red dot indicates where the hyperlapse will complete. And you'll see, as I shift the drone, the red dot will also shift to adjust the end point. Now, to add the point of interest, I need to select my subject. This is done by using your finger to draw a box around your subject. And now, as the drone flies along the preset path, the camera will rotate to keep the subject in frame. Finally, the last thing to set up is the shutter speed, which I'm going to use one second. Now, I'll just hit record and let it capture the hyperlapse. Once again, I'll skip over that and show you the result. And after that, I'll show you the other hyperlapse using a quarter second shutter speed, just for comparison. So here's the one second shutter speed, and now we'll compare that to the quarter second shutter speed. I prefer the longer shutter speed. Which do you prefer? Let me know in the comments below. One feature that would be nice to have with the course lock mode is the ability to adjust the elevation. But that can easily be done using the waypoint mode. So let's take a look at an example using waypoints. First, I'm going to fly to the location I want to start the hyperlapse. Now, to start setting waypoints, I just tap the screen where it says Set Waypoint. From here, you can now add and remove waypoints. To add a waypoint, simply tap on the plus sign and the waypoint will be added. Then you can fly to the next point, and once the drone and camera are in position, you can press the plus sign to add another waypoint. Now if you want to remove a waypoint, just tap on that particular waypoint and it will be removed. Now in this example, I want to capture the hyperlapse as the drone flies up and back. So I will set my first waypoint here, and then I will fly back to the point I want to end the hyperlapse. I will reposition the camera and tap the plus sign to add the waypoint. So in this example, I'm only using two waypoints, which I do quite often for ease of setup. Plus, you can get plenty of movement with just two waypoints. In this example, the drone is flying up and back with a slight camera tilt. And the drone will smoothly transition from the start point to the end point. Also, what I could have done is kept my first waypoint and set the second waypoint where I wanted to start the hyperlapse. Then I could switch the sequence to reverse from the settings menu. To do this, just tap where it says normal sequence to switch it to reverse. Anyway, to finish setting up this example, I'm going to set the length to 12 seconds and the interval to 3 seconds. For this example, I'll use a one second shutter speed, and before I hit record, I'll adjust the white balance. Now you can either fly close to your starting point before pressing record, or you can just press it here, and the drone will fly itself to the starting point. So I will let it run its course, and we'll skip over that and take a look at the end result.
I think that turned out all right. Now I have one more waypoint example and in this one I set four waypoints and I want to show you how the drone will smooth out the path along the waypoints instead of just flying straight from point to point. You'll still want to keep the changes in orientation fairly subtle between waypoints otherwise it may result in jerky movements in your hyperlapse. So as I set up this sequence I only changed the angle of the camera slightly between each point. I was roughly trying to follow the river while keeping the buildings in the center of the frame. Now to finish setting this one up I'm going to set the length to 15 seconds since I'm traveling a fair distance. Keep in mind you don't set the speed when using waypoints that's determined by the distance between the start and finish points and the set duration. I'm going to set the interval to 3 seconds and now I'll lock the white balance by switching it to manual. For this one I'm going to set my shutter speed to 1 over 1.25 any lower and the sky will be too overexposed. Alright that should be good. I'll hit record and let it fly the sequence. So this is what I was talking about earlier how the drone will smooth out the path along the waypoints. You can see the green line that connects each waypoint but that's not the exact path the drone follows. The blue line is the actual path traveled and it's a much smoother arc which results in a much better hyperlapse. So let's take a look and see how this one turned out. Well that's all I have for this video. There's so much more I could cover on hyperlapses and I will in future videos. But if you enjoyed this video please give that like button a click and maybe subscribe to my channel to see more videos with tips to help you capture and create better content.